Welcome home. I'm so glad you decided to join us today for Church at Home, and I would love to extend a special welcome to anyone new to the family. Each week, we produce this simple church service because we know it's hard to get to church, especially if you're trying to make a living and need to work on Sundays. So along with our partner church, Church of the Resurrection, all 300 of us want to say welcome home. We'd love to get to know you, and the simplest way to let us know you're watching is to text HELLO4 to 474747, and we will get in touch with you. And if this is helpful to you, please consider clicking the like and subscribe buttons and ring the bell for notifications. We are a church that seeks to transform lives with the resurrected power of Jesus, and there are a lot of great things happening, but we will get back to them in the end. Right now, let's gather together for a time of praise and worship. Atmosphere is changing now. For the Spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around that the Spirit of the Lord is here. The atmosphere is changing. For the Spirit of the Lord is here The evidence is all around oh, For the Spirit of the Lord is here Overflow in this place Fill our hearts with your love
will happen now For the Spirit of the Lord is here The evidence is all Hello, welcome to our house for Church at Home. My name is Anna and I'm one of the leaders here at Church at Home. And my name is Greg, I'm one of the pastors and the husband to this lovely woman. And we're excited to welcome you into our kitchen for Church at Home. If this is your first time with us, we want you to feel comfortable and welcome. This is a place where you can come and meet with Jesus wherever you are and whatever time you can. We pray that this is a refuge for you this week. Any look at the news will tell you that this is a place that is crazy and messed up. The world has just kind of gone all astir. And it, honestly, if you look in your own heart, as I look in my own heart, we know that we're pretty broken and messed up too. Our hope is that this next 30 minutes will provide you a place of peace and stability. Set down the things that beep, chirp, or buzz at you. Take a deep breath and release the stress and craziness you've been holding in. Gather friends or family around you or contact someone over the phone and watch with them. Let the words, music, and prayers encourage and strengthen your soul as we have church at home together. We begin with the words Jesus said, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and most important commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Lord, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord, have mercy. We like to say in our family that everyone believes something. Christians throughout the ages have put their beliefs in creeds. Here at Church at Home, we say together the Apostles' Creed, which is a short statement of Christian beliefs. Please join me as we say this together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Again, thank you for joining us, especially if this is your first time. Shoot us a text to 474747 with the word Hello Core to let us know that you're here. We're hoping to create a community of people who are watching this together and eventually will maybe join together. So when you send that text, a form will come to you with a place for you to ask questions. This is a safe place where you can ask anything. If there's any words you don't understand, any questions about the ideas you hear, Write them down and send them to us. We would love to find time to talk more deeply about what you hear. Now we're going to listen to Pastor Ron talk about the outrage of how we treat people in our culture and how we can learn to serve one another. Listen with me. Well, welcome back, Ron. So glad to have you and uh, back in a great passage. This is a challenging one, but a great one. It really at first is going to get um, some people riled up, but I'm asking you to hang in there because it really has some points that I think when we unpack it, you're going to find a lot of life in it. So you ready? Yeah, let's go. Let's do it. Back in 1979, there was a guy by the name of Bob Dylan, and he wrote a song on Slow Train a Coming that I think speaks to this passage. And it goes like this. You may be an ambassador to England or France. You may like to gamble. You might like to dance. You may be the heavyweight champion of the world. You may be a socialite with a long string of pearls, but you're going to have to serve somebody. Yes, indeed, you're going to have to serve somebody. We need to take a look at the message of Jesus and look at that statement. You're going to have to serve somebody to take a look at this passage. Jesus was a nonpartisan advocate. He addressed the culture, both the Jews and the pagans. He addressed all of it. And so his idea of the world 
And his vision was the heavenly vision that originally came forth at creation. And so Jesus' message in, in Paul's message with this is going to be that he's going to point out the disruption, the breakdown from the original created order, the breakdown that came from sin, doing things our way and the elevation of our own self. So we take a look at that for a minute. And then we realize that Jesus uh, had a message and a particular view of restoring the order to the Heavenly Father's order. Jesus was breaking the outrage of a corrupt society that treated people in an abusive, manipulating way. I think that really does speak to what Jesus can do for our culture today. Because we do treat people in an abusive and manipulating way. And Jesus was also addressing the power struggles of the Jewish and pagan world. And I don't know if you've noticed it. There are a lot of power struggles that are going on. Jesus was bringing people to repentance and offering a restored freedom to humanity. A restored freedom to you and I. Breaking down those walls of hostility. Breaking down those ideologies that were going on. You know, we all tend to want to please people. Uh, we tend to, um, at times, believe it or not, we reduce people. Um, gossip, things like that is really a reduction of people and who they are. And we know that that's not the proper way to do it. How do we move in our lives to pleasing Christ and having everything in our lives connecting to the gospel-centered relationships? Christ first in everything. Everything flowing from Christ. Because you're going to have to serve somebody. And it might as well be Jesus. Let's take a look at this passage. Um, the book that we're looking at is Colossians. We're in chapter 3, verses 18, and we're going to go to 4.1. And we're going to work through that in two different um, steps in a minute. But Paul is taking the message of Jesus to the Colossians. Freedom. Breaking down those ideologies. And when you first read this passage, you might want to throw it out. Because the first blush, it may hurt. But if it hurts... There could possibly be truth in it. Because all scripture is written for our benefit. It's all written for our learning. As Paul is bringing forth this mission of freedom that Jesus is bringing forth in the world. So I'm going to have you, if you would, please, Greg, read one, um, 18 uh, all the way to 21, including 21, if you'll read that. Got it. Wives, submit to your husbands as is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke your children, lest they become discouraged. Wow. At first, this might look strange in our culture. But let's go and take a look, because there must have been something really going wrong in Colossae for Paul to have to write these words. And we're going to take a look a little bit later at the word submit. So hang in there for that one, because I know it might ruffle your feathers. This was a society that power was established inappropriately to establish the indulgence or elevation of an insecure male culture. Ouch. Society, in this society, women were thought as property disregarded as secondary, as objects. And the household would have been organized, quite honestly, to strive for peace, to maintain the father's order. So children, obey your fathers. But let's take a look at this a little further. Children were thought as objects whose role was to aid in the productivity of the household, the farm, uh, the marketplace. And so Paul is saying here, do not be harsh, provoking,
but encouraging and loving one another. Do not embitter your children. So now we're going to take a look at this whole issue of submit. And it says, wives, submit your husbands as is fitting to the Lord. Husbands, love your wives. Do not be harsh to them. Do not objectify to them. Do not place them in a lower place. So we're going to move to this term submit. And my favorite place to go to in this, no doubt, is Ephesians 5.21. 5.21 says this, that we are to submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. So who's in the middle? Jesus is in the middle. And if we submit to reverence out of Christ, then we're honoring the Lord. So no one is in a supreme hierarchical condition. So if we look back at the beginning of creation, when sin entered the world, Adam took his eyes off of his wife, his bride, Eve. And as he did that, he moved out of this mutual submission relationship. And he began to say, I might be more important. And so therefore we have this sin that's come into the world. And now mutual submission is not happening. Dangerous, dangerous place. Wives, husbands, children, everyone. If we will but yet put Christ at the center of all relationships and mutually submit, oh my gosh, peace, tranquility, honor, everything comes back. Because when sin entered the world, disruption occurred. And in that disruption, there was an imbalance of equilibrium. And therefore, Paul is calling us back to a proper order where we submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Now that makes sense. That puts Christ first. Everything flowing out of this relationship with Christ, because since you're going to serve somebody, you might as well serve Christ. Now we're going to move into a difficult subject, which is slavery. Mm. And I would like for you to read those passages on to 4.1 and take a look at that. Bond servants, obey in everything those who are your earthly masters, not by way of eye service as people pleasers, but with sincerity of heart, fearing the Lord. Whatever you do, work heartily, as for the Lord and not for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward. You are serving the Lord Christ. For the wrongdoer will be paid back for the wrong he has done, and there is no partiality. Masters, treat your bondservants justly and fairly, knowing that you also have a master in heaven. Wow. Your translation says bondservants. Mm-hmm. Mine doesn't. Mine says slaves. Mm. And when we begin to look at that, there's a huge uh, probable misuse of this scripture. Yeah. As there would be probable misuse of the earlier scripture. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to really have to unpack this. So I do ask you to hang in there. And I think it'll be life-giving to you. The Bible does not ban all forms of slavery. But we need to define our terms. Slavery, bond servanthood in Scripture, is a welfare system. It's a system which helps with bankruptcy law. So what happens is, is if you um, lose everything, well, then you have the ability to earn back position and some finances if you come under uh, a, a master for a period of time that is only seven years. And this is a, a system that helps to establish people back up, not hold people down. It's time is limited, seven years. Do you hear me? This is not a lifetime right. situation. So what we need to realize is sin, uh, the slavery of sin. And Paul denounces enslavers in 1 Timothy um, verse 10, he says that enslavers are equal to all these other kinds of sin. And so we need to realize that chattel slavery, 
the enslavement of a person who is owned as property forever and whose children then and children's children are automatically enslaved. This type of slavery is completely condemned in Scripture. God wants freedom. He does not want people to be enslaved. He breaks the bonds of slavery of sin. In fact, dear friends, kidnapping and any sort of slave selling are unconditionally condemned. In Exodus 21, you might want to write that down and fact check me. Exodus 21, 27 says this, hit your slave and he goes free. And the point is, quite honestly, you don't own the person, but you own the parts of their means of production. You're bringing them back to health and welfare and honesty. The, the next one is Deuteronomy 23 says this, if a slave runs away and you don't send them back, here you go. You give the slave the benefit of the doubt. Because if they run away, they were probably mistreated and deserved to run away. Deuteronomy 24 says, if a man steals another person and enslaves them, they shall die. This is pretty clear. Slavery is condemned when you try to own another individual. And so, dear friends, we look at... Um, William Wilberforce, I have to tell you, while I was working on the sermon, I went down a rabbit trail and I really had a great time. William Wilberforce was um, someone who worked to end the slave trade in Britain. And he said this, to be freely alive is to, to the sufferings of my fellow creatures is to be a fanatic. I am one of the most incurable fanatics ever permitted to be at large. Dear friends in Christ, Jesus Christ sees your suffering. And it was so much a fanatic that he went to the cross to die for you, to give you and I freedom. And that's why we submit to him for what he has done for us. Wow. Christ first. Everything flowing from Christ. Because since you're going to have to serve somebody, you might as well serve Christ. Mm -hmm. In fact, as we look at the Lord's Prayer, the Lord's Prayer says, Thy will be done. Thank God it doesn't say my will be done or your will be done. Because that would be sin. It says thy will be done. And that was the life that Jesus lived. He served at the will of the Father. Thy will be done. He ushered in a radical new way of life. Perfect freedom. Jesus' message was to restore the order of the heavenly Father, His order, where we submit and we're in perfect relationship with Him. Breaking a corrupt society that mistreats people in an abusive and manipulative way. He says that is wrong. He dismantled the power struggles in the pagan and Jewish world. And he dismantles our power struggles and says no one is above each other. We're all equal and we submit to him. Jesus was bringing people to a place of repentance. Do you see that move from standing up to kneeling down, bowing down, a place of repentance, understanding that we are possibly at times doing things that are wrong, disrupting all of creation? Back to William Wilberforce for just a minute. He says this, it makes no sense to take the name of a Christian and not cling to Christ. Jesus is not some magic charm to wear like a piece of jewelry we think will give us good luck. He is the Lord. 
His name is to be written on our hearts in such a powerful way that it creates within us a profound experience of His peace and a heart that will be filled with His praise. So dear friends in Christ, as we submit to one another out of reverence for Christ, we are claiming Christ first. Mm -hmm. Everything then falls out and flows out of Christ. Because dear friends in Christ, you're going to have to serve somebody. And it might as well be your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Ron, for that amazing sermon. What a beautiful picture of how culture should operate in light of God's kingdom. Did this resonate with your heart today? Do you see the breakdown in our culture and how we do not serve others well? Did you discover a place where you have taken advantage of others or demanded your own way? Confession's a time to admit the areas where we fall short, where we hurt others, where we should have loved others and we did not. I'd like us to take a few moments to reflect on what we heard in the sermon and where you need to say sorry to God and to others. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Almighty God, creator of all, you marvelously made us in your image, but we have corrupted ourselves and damaged your likeness by rejecting your love and hurting our neighbors. We have done wrong and neglected to do right. We are sincerely sorry and heartily repent of our sins. Cleanse us and forgive us by the sacrifice of your Son. Remake us and lead us by your Spirit, the Comforter. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. By rejecting your love and hurting our neighbors. What an incredible picture of what we've done to this world and what's going on in our culture today. But the answer is found in the gospel, in the good news, and that is the forgiveness of God. And so I want you to hear this prayed over you. Almighty God, whose steadfast love is as great as the heavens are high above the earth, remove your sins from you. As far as the east is from the west, strengthen your life in his kingdom and keep you upright to the last day, through Jesus Christ, our merciful high priest. You know, as we're after the sermon and getting ready for a little bit more worship and some announcements, I want you to know that God loves you and meets you no matter where you are or how far away you feel today. I know even being married, living life together, sometimes you can feel that separation and it's only Christ's love that pulls us back together. And that comes through Christ's welcome first and foremost. And so I want you to listen to these welcoming words that come straight from the Bible. Words that are from the Gospels and remind us of the Gospels. They're called the comfortable words. Come to me all who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. I love that word advocate. It's someone who goes before us, who speaks in our place, and it reminds us that God has rescued us. He sent Jesus to be our savior, to be our servant. And he won't break up with us, but he's sending his love toward you today. And as a result, we can freely love and serve each other. And as Greg mentioned in marriage, sometimes it's hard to serve each other, but God gives us the power to do that. And then we can say the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And in that peace, as we say that word peace, we realize that the world is greatly lacking in peace right now. I almost can't stand to turn on the TV and see the news because we hear bad news everywhere. My heart is heavy and I know all of our hearts are heavy until we remember that we can run to a God who is bigger than all of this. This did not come as a surprise to him, anything that's going on in the news today. So we can turn to him in prayer and he both listens 
and he answers our prayers. We want to go into a moment of prayer and it may seem really strange to pray with people on YouTube or on Facebook, but I want you to enter into it. Like as I say some prayers, just think about those words and then we're gonna pray some extemporaneous prayers and just let your heart pray what you have to pray as well in those times. Let us pray. We pray that you will lead the nations of the world in the ways of peace, guide their leaders in wisdom and truth for the safety and good of all. Lord, we pray for peace in our communities all across the United States. Mm -hmm. We pray for peace where there have, has been fire, where there has been um, rioting and discord. We pray for peace where there's been hurricanes and damage. Um, from just the weather, Lord, and fires, Lord. We just pray for peace, that you would blanket our country with peace. Father, hear, hear our, our prayer, prayer through, through Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Lord, pour out on your whole church the spirit of unity and truth. May all who confess your holy name agree in the truth of your word, live in loving unity, and serve you with holy and righteous lives. Lord Jesus, we do pray for your church throughout the world, that you would raise up peaceful people who will bring justice and kindness and gentleness and love to a world that so desperately needs it. Help us to sacrifice, help us to give, help us to stand in unity with each other in the midst of the fracturing all, the, all around us, that your love and your good news may go forth. Together, Father, Father hear, hear our, our prayer, prayer through, through Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Lord, comfort and sustain everyone who in this fleeting life is in sorrow, need, sickness, or any other distress. I want you to take a moment and just lift up the names of people that are heavy on your heart right now. Lord, I lift up my uh, new friend that I met last Sunday who um, lost her mom a few years ago, that you would bless her, help her to know your care and concern for her as she raises up her son. Lord, we pray for all those that are in nursing homes, convalescent homes, Lord. I pray especially for our great-grandmother that she would know your peace and your care even when she doesn't know anyone else around her. together. Father, Father hear, hear our prayer, prayer through, through Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Now, I'd love to invite you to pray in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who Lord art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I want you to hear this blessing. May the Holy Trinity make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. Before we worship with our final song, I want to invite you to join us for a couple of great things. I mentioned earlier that we are a community that seeks to transform lives with the resurrected power of Jesus Christ, and I want to invite you to join with us on the journey. Consider checking out one of our core group Bible studies. They're a great low pressure way to get to know people and to dive deeper. Or you can help us out with our Sunday School Drive for Children who really need some help getting ready for the school year. Also, we have a Blessing of the Animals service coming up, and we'd love for you to join us if you have the day off. Please text HELLO CORD 474747 for more information, to connect, or just to say hello. Thank you so much for joining us today, and we look forward to seeing you again next week. 
and please join me as we sing our final song with Will. that once was crowned with thorns is crowned with glory now the Savior now to wash our feet now at his feet we bow the one who wore our sin Now robed in majesty, the radiance of perfect love now shines for all to see. Your name, your name is victory. All that held us now gives way to him who is our peace his final breath upon the cross is now alive in me oh your name your name is victory our praise will rise to Christ the King. Your name, your name is victory. Our praise will rise to Christ the King. By your Spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat. The resurrected King is resurrected. Borrowed for three days, his body there would not remain. Our God is around the grave. Our God is round. Oh, pray.